Affaire et des députés, consideration at second reading of Bill C-588, an act to amend the Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act, Sambro Island Lighthouse, in the name of Ms. Leslie. Ms. Leslie, seconded by Mr. Cleary, moves that Bill C-588, an act to amend the Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act, Sambro Island Lighthouse, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Environment and Sustainable Development debate. The Honourable uh, Member for Halifax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this past year, one day before Remembrance Day, so that was November 10th, 2014, the member for Sackville Eastern Shore and I held a press conference about a lighthouse and its link to Remembrance Day. And with us was veteran Earl Korn. Mr. Korn is a retired sailor of 38 years, and he talked about how the light from the Sambro Island Lighthouse was so important to Canada's men and women serving in the military. As Mr. Korn stated, quote, this is the last thing we saw leaving port and the first thing we saw arriving home. It's probably one of the most important pieces of real estate we have, end quote. Also at our press conference was George Swagstra, who immigrated to Canada in the 1950s. Mr. Swagstra told us a heartwarming story of immigrating to Canada by boat, crammed together with others who were seeking a new life in Canada, and how they spent a couple of weeks in rough seas. And he told us about one passenger who suffered a horrible case of seasickness, and how day after days and days of no relief, this man begged his friends to help him and he said, I don't think I can go on being on this ship. And that's when someone saw a light on the horizon, a small pinprick of light, probably not very interesting to you or I, but news of that light spread across the ship in an instant and Mr. Zwagstra and others went below and found this poor man with his seasickness who felt he couldn't go on and they hauled him to the deck above to take a look and see that light. That light was the first that they saw of Canada, Mr. Speaker, and that light was the light from the Sambro Island Lighthouse. People have called the Sambro Island Lighthouse Canada's Statue of Liberty. It was the first light that newcomers arriving by boat saw. They saw that light before they even saw land. And as we heard from Mr. Korn, that light was not only the first light that new immigrants saw, but it was the last light the Canadians saw when they went off to war. Sometimes it was the last memory they had of Canada for those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and did not return. Those stories demonstrate how important this lighthouse is. That light is a part of our history, yet it continues to shine today. The Sambro Island Lighthouse is an iconic structure. In fact, at a recent funding announcement to repair the lighthouse, the Minister of Justice called this lighthouse one of the most iconic structures, not only in Nova Scotia, but across the country. Well, Mr. Speaker, this iconic lighthouse, Canada's Statue of Liberty, is at risk. You see, a number of years ago, the community embarked on a community, sorry, not the community, the government embarked on a community consultation to draft a new piece of legislation that would be called the Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act. And this, in fact, was a very good consultation process. I've talked to people in Nova Scotia who were part of this process, and they were proud to be a part of it. Well, after a period of pretty robust consultation, the Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act was written, and it passed Parliament. And those in the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation community felt a real sense of accomplishment, like they were a part of something good that would preserve and protect our lighthouses. Then, in 2010, the old bait and switch, the federal government made an announcement. They announced that since lighthouses weren't really used as navigational aids anymore, lighthouses across the country would be declared surplus. And they were delisted, essentially, Government wouldn't take care of them anymore. Mr. Speaker, in the lighthouse protection community, there was an incredible feeling of betrayal. All of this work to save our lighthouses, and then the government announced in 2010 that 976 lighthouses across Canada were surplus. In the words of Barry McDonald, then president of the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society, quote, I'm very, very disappointed 
although the aid to navigation that's on that location is not declared surplus, what they're coming at here is the fact that they can maintain a steel tower on that site with a solar light a whole lot cheaper than they can maintain a heritage structure, end quote. 976 lighthouses across Canada were declared surplus, and yep, the Sambro Island Lighthouse was on that list. Now, once a lighthouse is delisted, the community does have an option to take over that lighthouse. Under the new Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act, the public was given two years to petition and to nominate historic lighthouses. However, in order to qualify for this designation, the group had, or an individual, had to submit a business plan for its upkeep. And we've seen this happen in different communities across Canada, where communities have applied to take over their local lighthouse. Well, shortly after the announcement in 2010, I met with members of the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society to talk options. And we discussed this option. Could we rally the community to come together to take over this lighthouse? A community group actually began the heritage designation process. However, it doesn't have the resources that are required to maintain this structure, not to mention the fact that trust has been lost. Why would you engage with a process when you just spent years in an engagement process that only led to your community lighthouse being put at risk. So trust was lost, Mr. Speaker. But also, in the case of the Sambro Island Lighthouse, standing roughly 24 meters tall, the lighthouse is located on a granite island at the entrance of Halifax Harbor. It's not as easily accessed as if it were on land or located on the end of a pier. Secondly, the financial cost to community associated with maintaining this structure is very high. For example, in 2008, the Coast Guard repainted the lighthouse and they had to use a helicopter to ferry in supplies, including a large web of scaffolding, and the total cost came in at about $80,000 just for a simple repainting. Well, it's just not possible, Mr. Speaker, for the community to take over this lighthouse. The Sambro Island Lighthouse isn't on a pier, or a wharf, it's not on the shores of Sambro or on Crystal Crescent Beach, it's on an island, essentially a piece of rock in the ocean. Sue Paul, secretary for the Sambro Island Lighthouse Heritage Society, put it well. This is on an island. It's not easy to get to. It's also an 80-foot tower. It's not something that you can just put painting scaffolding on to do a quick fix-up. It requires more work than our community can give it safely, end quote. The community isn't able to take care of this lighthouse, Mr. Speaker. It's dangerous. It's not easy to get to. Every summer, there's a community celebration called Southwester Days, and boat tours are organized to the island. I can't tell you how many of those boat tours have been canceled. Rain, fog, wind, big swells. It's not like it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. When I met with the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society in 2010, another thing was apparent. They were tired. They had put all these resources into a consultation process, and no one had any energy left. So eventually, the time for the community to register their intent to take over that lighthouse, those two years passed by. Well, in 2013, the local community in Sambro started to organize. What started as a meeting of friends, including Sue Paul, Stephanie Smith, and Brendan McGuire, who would later go on to represent this area as their MLA, they came together and talked about one goal. That was to save the Sambro Lighthouse. In October 2013, they established the not-for-profit organization Sambro Island Lighthouse Heritage Society, and they relied heavily on Barry McDonald for his expertise on lighthouses and his experience working with government. Barry mentored this group, and the group grew in size and in determination. They put together a petition and asked people to sign if they supported saving the Sambro Island Lighthouse. And 5,000 signatures later, signatures from across Canada, they asked MPs to present those petitions in Parliament. Working with this group of citizens, we came up with a solution. If Parks Canada took over this park, actually took it away from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, or the Coast Guard, if we could transfer over that responsibility to Parks Canada, we could preserve 
this lighthouse and this piece of our history. And that's what we did, Mr. Speaker, working with community and the wonderful legislative drafters here at the House of Commons, I was able to put together Bill C-588, an act to amend the Heritage Lighthouse Protection Act, Sambro Island Lighthouse. With the passing of this act, we could save the Sambro Island Lighthouse and this piece of our history. Well, why should Parks Canada take over this lighthouse? Let me tell you some of the historical facts about this lighthouse, Mr. Speaker. Built during the Seven Years' War in 1758, by the, it was built by the seven, during the Seven Years' War in 1958 by the first act passed in the Nova Scotia House of Assembly. That was the first bill passed in our legislature in Nova Scotia. It was about this lighthouse. And it is the oldest operational lighthouse in the Americas. And the federal government has already recognized the historical significance of this structure. In 1937, Sambro Lighthouse was designated a National Historic Site and a plaque was placed in the village of Sambro. And also the construction of this lighthouse was commemorated as a National Historic Event in 1937. In 1996, the lighthouse received Federal Heritage Review Board classified status, which is the highest ranking status for Canadian government heritage buildings. The heritage character of the Sambro Island Lighthouse was described on the Parks Canada website of Federal Heritage designations as, quote, one of the most historically important lighthouses in Canada due to its age and its association with Halifax, harbors marine, harbors marine traffic for over 235 years. This stone and concrete tower is considered the oldest operating lighthouse in North America. Recently, Mr. Speaker, I attended a funding announcement with the Minister of Justice and the member for South Shore St. Margaret's, who announced $1.5 million to go towards the repair of this lighthouse. This is our chance. It's our chance to fix the lighthouse and restore it to its former glory, and then to preserve and protect it for generations to come. Why spend $1.5 million to prevent this lighthouse from tumbling into the sea now, only to have it tumble into the sea 40 years from now? We need to act to protect this lighthouse. In my last few minutes, I'd like to say some thank yous. And I do recognize that if you start a list of thank yous, you're bound to forget someone. But there are a number of people, I'll take that risk, because uh, there are a number of people who deserve mention in this house. Thank you to Sue, Paul, and Stephanie Smith who have spearheaded the community movement, bringing us all together as the Sambro Island Lighthouse Heritage Society. And they credit their nanny, Minnie Gilkey Smith, because without her admiration for and stories of the lighthouse that she passed down to them and the rest of their family, they may not have felt so deeply rooted to that island and lighthouse. Thank you, Barry McDonald, for your support and mentoring of this group. I know you recently retired from the Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society, and that is a well-deserved retirement, but I also know that lighthouses are in your heart, and we're bound to see you at a meeting or two. Mr. Speaker, this lighthouse transcends party lines, and I'd like to thank a few politicians across those party lines. Brendan McGuire, the Liberal MLA for Halifax Atlantic, has been steadfast in his commitment to this lighthouse. The member for Halifax West has also worked on this issue and brought attention to it in the House, as has my colleague, the member for Sackville Eastern Shore. Members of the community of Sambro have named the member for South Shore St. Margaret's a champion for lighthouses, and I agree with them. Senators Munson and Cordy, thank you for also being lighthouse supporters, as well as local councillor Steve Adams. And to the school children and the school of Sambro, who supported this cause with selling bracelets and awareness projects at school, well, the entire school drew pictures of the lighthouse, and they made a video of them singing the lighthouse song, and they sent that video to the Prime Minister. I'm sure he has it marked in his favorites list. And they have asked him to save our lighthouse. Thank you to Shabukto News, who always made space in their publication for another story on the Sambro Island Lighthouse to the community of Sambro for throwing themselves wholeheartedly into this project and gathering so many names for the petition, including Mishu's store in Sambro, and now we're cooking in Herring Cove. They got plenty of signatures on the petitions. And for each and every person who took the time to gather names for this petition, thank you. I also want to thank Lighthouse Advocate Chris Mills and Rip Irwin. Rip was a founding member of uh, Nova Scotia Lighthouse Preservation Society, which started after a trip out to the Sambro Island Lighthouse. 
As you can see, Mr. Speaker, this isn't just a lighthouse. This is part of our hearts, part of our community locally, but it's also part of the fabric of our history as Canadians. It is incredibly important to us. I agree with the Minister of Justice that this is an iconic structure for Canada. It's time to protect this lighthouse, and it's time for this lighthouse to shine on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and comment. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for her, her speech today. Uh, her, her work and the work of my colleague, the Member for South Shore St. Margaret's, on preserving, preserving uh, lighthouses, not just only in, in Nova Scotia, but across the country, I think is exemplary. Uh, I'm wondering if she could comment on, on steps that need to be taken moving forward to make sure that this lighthouse is protected. Member for Halifax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for that question. And I, I, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. It was just a couple of weeks ago that we had an announcement in Sambro, as I mentioned, where government is uh, giving $1.5 million to the restoration of this lighthouse. That was seen as such an incredible win for the community. I, I mean, everybody has been walking on air since that announcement. But that announcement for the restoration is important. The stairs are falling apart, there are broken windows. Structurally, it's not even safe. You can't even, you're not even supposed to go up to it anymore. So they're, they're vital uh, if we're going to protect this lighthouse. But then what? So the steps that he's asking about, uh, I really believe that the step that would protect this lighthouse properly would be for us to transfer it over from Coast Guard or Department of Fisheries and Oceans to Parks Canada. Parks Canada has a mandate uh, to preserve and protect these structures. It is a national historic site. Uh, we have celebrated this with a stamp, with a coin, uh, with acts in, in legislatures. Uh, so it really needs that, that protection, not just the designation of a heritage site, but that protection and bringing it under the inventory of Parks Canada. So I see that as the next step. Questions and comments? Question we come on side. The Honourable Member for Bonavista, Gander, Grand Falls, Windsor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I enjoyed the speech, and I do have several lighthouses in my riding as well. Uh, some of them are struggling because they were declared surplus, and one of the things that they're doing is they're, they're finding innovative ways through uh, agencies such as ACOA, which is our Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. Um, in regards to uh, one of the biggest complaints uh, is that when you transfer these assets over to, if you do the, through Environment Canada, through commemorations, they come with the commemoration. They come with the uh, distinction of being what it is, but it never comes with the money to help them jumpstart in a particular uh, way. Does, does, her, does her bill provide for any type of operating money or capital money available for these uh, groups? The Honourable Member for Halifax. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague uh, for his question. And uh, actually, um, Fisheries and Oceans is in custody of three lighthouses in Newfoundland, Cape Race, Cape Pine, and Cape Spear. Uh, so, of course, he's pretty close to this issue. My bill does not come with funding, uh, and that's actually for a procedural reason. If a private member's bill, so, so I'm, I'm not in government yet, uh, so <laughs> if we actually have money attached to our private member's bills, um, I'm forgetting the term. Anybody? Royal recommendation. Royal recommendation. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we need royal recommendation from government to do that, and I wasn't expecting to get it. So for the step in a private member's bill, what I see is a transfer, a straight-over transfer to Parks Canada uh, so that it's in the Parks Canada inventory. And as, as uh, the member heard earlier, we do have a commitment of funds, $1.5 million, to restore the lighthouse and bring it back to its uh, previous glory, and that's a fantastic step. Questions and comments? Question and comment outside. Leonard Ab, Deputy de Gaspésie et de la Madeleine. Merci, M. le Président. Puis euh, j'aimerais remercier ma collègue d'Halifax. Je trouve que son discours a été vraiment très songé. C'est un discours que je pense qu'il y a plusieurs gens qui habitent dans les communautés côtières puissent vraiment se retrouver, peuvent vraiment se reconnaître dans le, dans le discours qu'elle a présenté. J'aimerais parler de l'aspect la, culturel des forts. Je pense qu'on on sait que les communautés ont beaucoup dépendu sur les forts. C'était un lien euh, sécu, de, qui sécurisait les communautés. 
on sait qu'il y avait plusieurs familles qui, 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 qui avaient vécu dans les, des régions très éloignées pour faire, faire fonctionner l'effort dans des régions plus éloignées. Mais certainement, à Halifax également, je pense que les, les communautés, euh, surtout maritimes, on parle de pêcheurs, on parle de marins, auraient beaucoup dépendu sur, euh, sur l'effort pour les sécuriser. Et je pense qu'il y a plusieurs aspects culturels, euh, plusieurs communautés culturelles de, qui, 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 ont, qui se, se voient eux, dans euh, le travail qu'on est en train de faire aujourd'hui pour essayer de sauver non seulement son fort, mais l'effort à travers le Canada. Est-ce que je me demanderais à, à ma collègue, est-ce qu'elle pourrait parler de l'aspect culturel que présente l'effort? Merci. The Honourable Member for Halifax, you only have about 30 seconds. Oui, merci. Exactement. L'aspect culturel est très, très, très important. Uh, effectivement, quand le, 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 mon collègue pour Sackville Eastern Shore il a organisé une conférence de presse avec les vétérans et les immigrants. And I frankly was like, I don't understand the connection here. And I didn't even know those stories about the light being the last light that our military service men and women would see as they went off to war, or the first light that newcomers would see on the horizon when they were coming to Canada to start a new life. Those stories are as important as that structure, but those stories are tied to that structure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.